Aloha, namaste, this is Radha, and I'm here to talk about our lunar eclipse, which is happening on the full moon this coming Tuesday, the 17th of September. And so we have it coming at 2.41 p.m. Hawaii time is the beginning of this eclipse. It's a partial eclipse. It's not going to fully obscure the moon. Um, and when I say it, I mean the earth. <laughs> In a full moon, we have the sun across from the moon, right? It's lighting it up, creating this full orb of light that we see in the sky. And during an eclipse, the earth is lined up with the sun and the moon. And so it, we're in the way <laughs> and we don't get all that light on the moon. But in a partial eclipse, sometimes you can only see a little bit of a shadow on the moon. You don't often see um, that you know overwhelming shadow where the moon goes like completely red. Um, so we're just going to catch a little bit of that here in Hawaii at the very end of it, since it's ending at 647 PM, we'll have a little bit of time when there'll be um, the sun beneath the horizon in order to even see it. But in other locations, you'll be able to see a little better the partial eclipse, and it'll go a little bit later into the night, even into the 18th in those places. So this is a full moon that's happening in Pisces, right? Our North node Rahu is in Pisces in a star called Uttara Bhadrapada, and the moon is in the star Purva Bhadrapada. This is the early and the late blessed step. And then we have across the way our sun was just entered Virgo, close enough to the south node K2, who's in the star of Hasta. So we're reckoning with this Pisces Virgo axis that began last November. This is when the nodes entered this axis and began this, like opened this cycle for us on karma with whatever Pisces is for us and whatever Virgo is for us. So whatever houses Pisces and Virgo are for you, whatever area of your life this is, have had a lot of accentuation in the last year, almost year. And we'll continue until the spring of next year. This is our second in the set of eclipses. We had them in March, late March. We had an eclipse that really um, began the karma really showing up in our life of this axis. But of course, the sun at that time was in Pisces. So we were accentuating the Pisces end of the axis. And now we're in the more Virgo-y end of the axis and we're lighting up this Pisces place in a full moon, a partial lunar eclipse. And there's going to be like an almost eclipse on the other side of the solar eclipse in two weeks. So we get kind of two tasters on either side to help us really integrate what we're learning here. And that's really what I look at eclipses as. These are like sped up school. Like you can go to, you know, a nine month school, or you can go to a two week or three week program. That's all in all hours of every day. And it can be intense, but a lot of transformation occurs. And of course, there's some integration that occurs as well. So what Pisces is bringing to us is this sort of dreamy quality, right? This is the area of our life where we're not totally present with the details. We tend to be out to sea. We want everything to be all one. We're not very into distinguishing between this thing or that thing. It's this very um fluid area of our life and whatever house that is for you that's the area that you're very pisces in you know if it's your fourth house then that's that's where you get very watery and dreamy and emotional and also deeply connected and spiritual and if it's your first house then that's the essence of who you are we have the moon in this star called purva bhadrapada I've spoken about the star in recent times because it's come up for the, for Saturn, um, but it is, and Saturn is still there in the Aquarius side of it. It is a star of awakening. It's a star where we're suddenly shown the light. You know, it's like this lightning flash of awareness where it's like, oh my God, what have I been doing? I've been stuck in this material rut obsessed with my form. And actually I'm so much more than that. I'm so much beyond form. And we really start to step out of the mindset of the actor and into the witness consciousness, but it's just the beginning. It's just like, I see the light. You know, if you've had 
um, a spiritual journey of some sort, whether that's been using medicine or whether that's been more of a sober journey, if you've had some kind of spontaneous kundalini arising during meditation, um, maybe you've had a near-death experience or some other kind of way that you've all of a sudden been jolted into full awareness of the preciousness of this life, but also the way in which it's a, a play, a, a grander thing we're a part of, like a dream. And we're not, you become less vested in all the details than you may have been before, because suddenly you realize what really matters, right? All the little things that you were caught up in before kind of seem a little bit silly when you really get that flash of the big picture and you start to recognize how much how much volition you actually have over your life. Maybe not all the different things that happen to you, but certainly your experience and your reaction to life as it comes at you. And that does actually greatly influence what choices come before you and what experiences you have, as many people know. So this full moon and this lunar eclipse is really an opportunity for us to take in that full spiritual experience. Rahu, the North Node, is more into Pisces, right? He's the nodes move backwards. Our karma is this backwards moving cycle. And so he's in a star called Uttara Bhadrapada, which is the later blessed step. This is ruled by the serpent of the deep. We're going deep here. This is not a lightning flash of awareness. This is like, oh, we actually have to dive into that awareness and walk through some pretty murky waters in order to come out on top. And so we have this obsession point because where Rahu is, is where we're obsessed. This is the place where we think we know everything. We want to keep trying. We're, we're really quite immature and we don't know everything. And we don't have the, even the self-awareness to realize our lack of experience. So we keep throwing ourselves in. We follow messages, we follow signs, and we often especially in a placement like this, can fall really deep into these delusions and illusions about what we're doing and where we're at and how far we, we are. And so this is something we've been dealing with already in this area of our life. And the moon, of course, isn't just the moon. The moon rules something for each of us. And so Rahu moving in is putting that energy of illusion and delusion and obsession on whatever area of our life the moon rules and bringing it into this arena of Pisces, of this house where we've already felt obsession. So for different ruling planets, different signs, um, different houses that that moon is, it's going to bring up a different area of your life that you're really highlighting right now and how you're integrating into this place that Pisces is for you. And it's reflected off of, of course, the sun. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. And where the sun is, down here, during the south node, is just entering Virgo in this star called Uttara Falguni. So much like the Uttara and Purva over here, we have a first and a later. And the early, the first one, Purva Falguni, where Mercury still is, is where we had our last new moon. And there's a lot of playful energy. This is the beginning of relationships when everything's fun and we're creative and we're enjoying and we're full of pleasure and delight. And Uttara Falguni is where we start to make a lot of deals, negotiations, contracts, agreements. We need to see both people's perspectives. We need to make everything fair. Or if not fair, agreed, agreed upon. Often it's not fair. Often you know, the contract benefits one person more than the other. But when we write it down, we say, this is so. And of course, contracts are only as good as the people who make them, right? We can agree on anything. We can write it down. We can notarize it. We can seal it. But if somebody's not fully in integrity in making that deal, then it can still fall apart. And we all know that. So this is where we're really balancing our energy 
what can we control in the material world? How much can we obsess over the details and take care of all the things of our body, of our environment? Can we keep ourselves healthy? Can we keep, keep ourselves clean? Virgo is, of course, a sign that brings up a lot around health issues for us, particularly because Venus has been traversing through this sign. We may have found ourselves struggling with various things around our health. Venus is on her way out, but she's going to bless us with her presence for these last few hours of the eclipse before she moves into her own sign of Libra. So what have we been obsessing over in our relationships? And of course, since the sun is just moving in, we haven't been holding our power in this arena. We've, we've had our power in Leo. It's just now moving in right before this eclipse, the day before on the 16th. So we haven't had a lot of time to land here. But of course, our power isn't particularly powerful in Mercury sign of Virgo. We tend towards being with our head down and organizing, categorizing, seeing how many more things we can move around in order to make something work, as opposed to seeing the big picture and leading from that connection to source. And this is really where we're going to see how we play this game. And each of us are different in this regard. You know, maybe you have planets in Pisces, maybe you have planets in Virgo that are being affected here. Maybe you don't have planets in either place. And it's really just been this karmic axis we've been dealing with for the last year that's lit up this area for you. But where you pay attention to all the nitty gritty details and where you don't, and particularly over the last year where you've been avoiding those details, where you've been looking away in favor of this sort of rose colored glasses and ideal of what you want things to be like, that's going to be shown in this month. We're going to see what we've been avoiding and particularly in the solar eclipse, which I'll do another video on, of course, in a couple of weeks, that's going to come up for us. We're going to be forced to look at what we've been avoiding. But in the meantime, this is the chance to kind of dance with that rose colored view that we have of the world, this oneness, this expansiveness, this capacity to connect all things and not see the division, this hopefulness. And this fluidity that Pisces offers us usually. But when Rahu's involved, there can be a lot of waves. Rahu's like air. And there's a lot of stops and starts as we try to find our way forward. And so we can imagine it might get a little stormy in these waters. And it's already starting. It's already started to happen. Really, the last new moon we had began to open us up into this um into this portal. And like I said, the sun has barely even moved in to this place to reflect upon this moon. This is a partial eclipse. So we're really going to be diving deep into this for the weeks to come. This is really just an opening and it's an awakening. Like wake up, notice where you've not been noticing, you know, notice where your head's been too much in the details and where you haven't been paying enough attention to the details because there are going to be areas of our life that we've been obsessing over. And there's going to be areas in of our life where we have really been avoiding doing the due diligence and maybe been, you know, hopping from one thing to the next and thinking we we know it all, or we've seen the light, or we have this answer. We've got it all figured out now. I've already started to see the posts coming in of people who have it all figured out, you know, and, and that's beautiful. You know, these awakenings are so beautiful and so profound because there's something we can hold onto and carry as we move further into our journey. We can hold them like a light, like remember that thing we saw that still exists. And that's our guiding post to remember that there's something bigger that we're going for. But of course, along the way, we also have to take care of the things that come up in front of us, the little steps that are directly in front of us. I watched Alice in Wonderland with my son um, last night, and it was really funny because the the animated version, like the old version, you know, and and I'm like, oh, this is kind of like a trip, you know, it's, and, and we know that, but I hadn't seen it in so long that I didn't really have that frame of reference to, to look at it. And she's going through this whole huge like a wild adventure that's on some level very expansive she's having all these cool realizations along the way but at the same time there's simple things that become very hard and she's just like oh 
now I can't get the key. You know, now I'm too big. Now I'm too small. And like each of the little details kind of trip her up. And it just made me think of this Virgo Pisces situation when it's like, ah, well, now I've run into this, you know, this little scenario that I have to deal with. And how am I going to deal with that? Because, you know, this is where I want to go, but it's so big and so vast and so far, and it doesn't have a map. And so we get stuck along the way with each thing we run into. We're like, oh, before we know it, we're not even going that way anymore. We're now we're on some crazy twists and turns. I also recently just read with my son, The Phantom Tollbooth, which if you haven't read that book, it's an amazing classic book. And this kid, you know, is very bored and he ends up on uh, in, in his little toy car riding through a phantom toll booth that just shows up in his room one day. And it's the same idea. It's like each place leads him to the next place and he gets stuck in all these places where everybody in those places is stuck on their one concept, you know, whether that's words and letters or whether it's numbers or whether it's point of view and perspective. And the idea of how easy it is to get tripped up in the details is so profound when we think about it. It's so easy to think like, okay, this is the most important thing in front of me, this new like mission I've been sent on because it's here in front of me and it's a problem and I have to deal with it. And on one hand, we do, right? On one hand, we have to deal with the little missions life sends us, but we can't forget our bigger picture because when we do, then we just end up following minutia and we totally lose sight of what, what our bigger path is and what our bigger journey is. And so that's really what the remembrance is here in this, um, in this full moon and lunar eclipse that we have. Um, so I am going to leave us with that for now because there's so much more, but there's always more. Um, actually, I will just quickly mention again, flip back to the screen, the Mars and Jupiter drishtis on our really kind of on K2, Mars is drishti. Mars gives a four house gaze and it's pretty much directly on K2. It's not really hitting Venus too hard. It's not really hitting the sun too hard. It's really hitting the south node. And Mars and K2, when they connect, can have a very militant way about them. There's a surgical quality here. And because Mars is in Gemini, we're really stuck in our opinions right now. We can be very feisty about what we believe is true. We're not afraid to start an argument. We're kind of like, almost wanting to, you know, pushing buttons is, is fun when Mars is in Gemini until it becomes not fun, until it becomes an argument. And so reckoning with what's playful and what's clearly not, because when Mars hits K2, the playfulness has left the room, the joy has left the room. And part of the problem is, like I said, Venus has been here and our joy has already been a little challenged by Venus's presence being in Virgo, but she's kind of on her way out and she's really receiving this drishti from Jupiter. And Jupiter in her own sign of Taurus is giving the call for expansion on a more material realm for sure, but also really hopefulness around the happiness and pleasure and joy we can have if we build things that hold us materially, that hold our relationships that allow us to be in more harmony with ourselves and others. Things around our body and our health can come up. Things around our sensuality and our pleasure, things around food are always present. The more we can build structures that help us connect with each other and with ourselves, the more we're going to thrive. And so, you know, this period of time, we've probably been working with a lot of cleansing of our body, or at least noticing the places where we need to cleanse our body, this drishti can help us move forward in that way as well. And because Venus is moving into her own sign, perhaps bringing in a social element to that. How can we get help? How can we join with other people? So it's not kind of just us on our own struggling through this thing. So um, I hope that's helpful. And I hope that is hopeful for you because a lot of times we have a lot of fear around eclipses. And I, I really like look at them as this, this intense retreat we're going on. You know, life isn't very normal during an eclipse, particularly in the hours of the eclipse itself, even if it's not visible where you are. So that period of time from 2.41 Hawaii time to 6.47, it's like 
not a great time to be in a car. Now, for a lot of us, that's commute time. <laughs> we might have to pick our kids up at school. We might have to come home from work. We might have to go to the grocery store. Expect challenges in those details. Expect your trip to be a little trippy, you know? And at the same time, make space within whatever it is you have to do to be open to receive what the universe has to share with you because there's also a lot that we can get in these portals. There's so much wisdom and information and cosmic download coming through. And in the case of this lunar eclipse, it's from, it's futuristic. It's from the future. It's telling us where we can go. And that's so powerful and such a wonderful thing to, um, to be able to tune into. So if you would like to know how this affects you personally, I offer a breakdown for all 12 signs on my Patreon site, Cosmically Aligned. You can go to patreon.com Rada Home Astrology and check that out. I also wrote a much bigger report for all the 12 signs on what Rahu and Pisces is for you, what K2 and Virgo is for you. So each of the 12 ascendants have this, like I said, being a different house for them. And I really go into detail on what that is for each of us in this report I wrote. And I wrote it in November when they first switched into the sign. But if you go onto my website, radahomeastrology.com, sign up for my email list, that will come directly to your inbox and you'll get a chance to really dive deep into what this whole eclipse axis is teaching you you know, and that's, it's a really important thing to do. And if you want to work one-on-one, -on -one, I'm here for you. I have all kinds of readings, short, small, recorded Zoom um, ways in which we can drop in a little deeper for you. Blessings on your eclipse and I will see you soon. Namaste.